What's up, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast. You know, there's a moment in business when you realize everything's about to change, and unfortunately, right now is that moment. I'm talking about a genuine inflection point, December 31st, 2025. Mark that date, people, because what happens after that date in January is what's going to separate the wheat from the chaff in this industry. And the industry I'm referring to is the Chinese EV market. Today, we're diving into something fascinating, the final frenzy before China's EV subsidies get slashed, what it reveals about the industry and why companies that recall their products courageously might be the ones that you want to bet on. Sounds counterintuitive, right? Stick with me. Let's paint a picture of what's actually happening today in China's EV market. It's absolutely madness. The Lee Auto i6 drops and boom, 20,000 orders in a few hours. The Hongmeng M7 drops, 40,000 in 24 hours. And here's where it hits home for me as a Neo Bull. The new ES8 launches and they've got so many orders that they exceed their entire production capacity for the year. We're talking 40,000 vehicles, their whole 2025 allocation gone. The Neo app literally crashed. I'm reading about this owner in Beijing, Mr. Sun, trying to lock in his ES8 on September 20th. Eight minutes of waiting just to get his order through because the system couldn't handle the traffic. That's not a problem that you want to have, but honestly, it's the kind of problem that tells you something real is happening. But here's the thing everyone needs to understand. This isn't just hype. This is economics in the purest form. On January 1st, 2026, that's 109 days from now, China's EV tax exemption policies dramatically change. Right now, if you buy an EV, you get the full exemption on purchase tax. If you wait till next year, that gets cut in half. So that means maximum exemption goes to 15,000 uh, ren per vehicle. Let me break this down and what this means in real money. Let's take Tesla's Model Y long range, 339,000 ren in price tax. The purchase tax calculation is vehicle price divided by 1.13, then multiplying by 10%. That's 30,000 ren in tax. Buy it before December 31st, zero tax. By January 1st, you're paying 15,000 rent. For context, that's like buying an extra high-end laptop. If you buy vehicles over 40,000 ren, you're essentially paying for an extra high-end luxury handbag that you don't even get to take home. That's a real cost that hits your wallet immediately. And it's not just national policy. Local subsidies are disappearing too. Places like Haiku, Chengdu, they're offering an additional 3,000 to 5,000 ren, but it's on a first come, first serves basis with a limited quota. Stack that with 15,000 ren replacement subsidies, insurance incentives from manufacturers, and you're looking at a combined 30,000 ren in savings. So that's why people are losing their minds trying to lock in orders. Now let's talk about something that doesn't get discussed enough. Are these order numbers even real? This is where my objective hack comes on as someone who's bullish on NEO. William Lee himself, NEO CEO, said something pretty telling. If we were to count these orders based on publicly released figures, we'd have already reached 100 million. We haven't participated in this inflation. That's a shot across the bow to the entire industry, and he's right to call it out. Here's what's happening, what's actually happening. Most of these orders that everyone's celebrating are actually just small deposits. You pay a tiny amount, you're able to cancel at any time. A real large deposit, quote unquote, the kind that shows that you're serious, requires at least 5,000 ren with some serious um, stipulations around cancellation. The conversion rates from small deposits to actually ordering is crazy. It's around 10 to 30%. That's it. People are placing orders across multiple brands simultaneously and then eventually picking one. Some dealers are even fabricating orders themselves, placing small deposits um, by themselves to hit the manufacturer's quota uh, to be a dealer. It's a data game that makes everything look rosier than reality. Hong Meng claimed over 100,000 orders in a single week. The M7 had 220,000 orders before launch. So are all of those converting to sales? 
Absolutely not. In the short term, it creates market confidence. In the long term, what does it do? It erodes credibility. When people realize the numbers don't match the deliveries, that doesn't look good for the company. The industry data suggests that Q4 this year could see a 40% increase in new energy vehicle sales from the tax exemption going away. But what happens in Q1 uh, 2025, I mean 2026, that's the real question. William Lee already warned us about this in September this month. Achieving even half of Q4 2025 levels in Q1 2026 would be a positive outcome. Think about that. He's basically saying that the market could get cut in half overnight. That's not just a challenge for NEO. That's an industry-wide reckoning. Here's where theory meets reality and it's getting ugly. Remember Mr. Sun from Beijing? His ES8 got pushed to the end of January 2026. Neo promised to cover the purchase tax difference. And to their credit, they're the only company so far that clearly states they'll issue purchase tax difference subsidy coupons up to 15,000 ren if delivery delays are their fault. But here's the kicker, the 15,000 ren uh, replacement subsidy he was counting on, it's potentially gone because he can't take delivery in 2025. He reported it to Neo's headquarters through his sales rep and since putting out this video, as far as I know, there's been no response. That's 15,000 rent right now. That's not pocket change. And if you're Mr. Sun, you're probably thinking, do I wait and hope Neo makes this right? Or do I cancel my order and go with another brand? The entire industry is facing supply chain chaos. CATL and BYD semiconductors are running 24 hour overnight shifts. Tesla's Giga Shanghai factory is increasingly increasing um, gigafactory worker pr uh, capacity and they still can't meet the, waddle, the Model Y demand. NEO is prioritizing the Envo L90 and the ES8. Uh, that means that other models are getting delayed. And here's the legal gray area that no one's talking about. Most uh, uh, purchasing contracts say that the manufacturer is not responsible for delayed delivery due to force majeure. But is system crash force majeure? Is insufficient capacity force majeure? There's no legal definition which opens this up to a litigation nightmare. Some local subsidies have even tighter windows. There's one area that's requiring that your um, invoice is invoiced before December 31st. That's not enough. On top of that, they want to make sure that you um, have also applied by uh, January 10th, 2026. And if you don't, you are automatically forfeiting your right to the subsidy. Consumer complaints are up 37% year over year in Q3, 2025. Over 60% are about delayed delivery and false advertising. The back end services can't keep up with front end sales. It's a classic case of indigestion. Now let me shift gears to something that's totally unrelated but totally connected to everything that we're talking about, recalls. BMW just announced a global recall of over 300 uh, 30,000 vehicles. Apparently the starter relay corrosion could cause some short circuits and fires. Toyota recalled nearly 600,000 vehicles for a dashboard software glitch and Tesla recalled all 2025 Model Y vehicles in Australia for Windows sensor and safety system defects. Your reaction might be, see, these companies are cutting corners. But here's my controversial take. The companies that are uh, courageously recalling their products are actually showing strength and not weakness. Think about it, modern EVs have over 200 electric control units compared to 50 to 100 in traditional vehicles. Lines of code have jumped from millions to hundreds of millions. Tesla's um, operating system complexity rivals a smartphone. Actually, it rivals a small data center. Toyota's recall um, software error during instrument cluster startup. Not hardware damage, a software logic flaw. BMW's starter relay recall appears to be aging electrical components, but it's actually related to ceiling design, human environment suitability, and material durability. These are edge cases that emerge over time under specific conditions. Here's the kicker. Recalls are up globally, not because cars are getting worse, but because standards are getting higher and there's more and more technology than ever. 
The U.S. recalls 30 million vehicles annually, over 15% of the total fleet, um, yet driving fatalities the, are uh, decreasing. That means overall safety is improving even as these recalls increase. The article I read framed it perfectly. It's not the cars that have become worse, but the requirements have become higher. The system has become more transparent and problems are easier to expose. So when Neo or any other company proactively uh, recalls their vehicle, they're showing you that they have strong post sales monitoring, rapid response capabilities, and willingness to take ethical action. The companies that you should worry about are the ones that never recall anything because that says to me that they're hiding something. This connects directly to the subsidy rush. Companies are compressing development cycles, things that usually take three to five years, for some companies are now taking 18 months. One new manufacturer did 120 million kilometers of road testing um, before launching compared to the standard 300 million kilometers of road testing that tra more traditional automakers are doing. Virtual simulation helps, but real world data is still required and it's still uh, required especially in extreme situations. The subsidy cliff is going to expose which companies built businesses versus which ones were actually just riding the wave. When the free money disappears, your product, your service qualities, your loyal con um, consumers, your fan base, that's going to be all that's left. Anyways, that has been it for this episode of the Quartzite Financial Podcast. I hope you guys liked and enjoyed this episode. My name is Obi. Um, if you found it useful, helpful, educational, at the very least entertaining, make sure you hit the subscribe, the subscribe button. Make sure you click the like button. Leave a comment down below. I want to know what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye.